Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Jenny Zell, and I'm the moderator of today's webinar. This is the second of two training sessions on headless.cms. In today's session, we'll show you how to take advantage of .cms's edit mode anywhere. This will allow your marketing team to create, edit, and manage content in your Jamstack application, which gives your team the ability to do all of this in context. This webinar will be recorded and it will be sent out after the webinar is over. We'll also have a Q&A session at the end with our speakers. So if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to add them to the chat box as we go along. Today's speakers are Freddie Montes, senior front end developer, and Ivor Padilla, front end developer, both at .cms. And with that, I'd like to pass over to Freddie. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today on this second part on the Jamstack webinar. In this part, we're going to explain how to make your Jamstack site editable with .cms. Okay, I was going to explain us how to deploy our Jamstack website to Vercel. Deploy a Jamstack to Vercel. We need three environment variables in our project. Environment variables are just variables that are deeply tied to the Node.js process and they are needed to run this application in different environments. The first one we need is the next public .cms host. This is the .cms instance where your data is hosted. This is used to make requests to our GraphQL server. It has a next public prefix because this is how Next.js exposes the variables to the browser. Without this prefix, this variable will be only available in the node process. Deploy URL. This is required for .cms edit mode anywhere and it'll be used in our custom server. Freddy will explain later in the webinar why is it needed. And lastly, our buried token, which is an access token exposed by .cms API to make authenticated requests to our API. Now, what is Vercel? Vercel is a cloud platform for static sites, serverless functions, and they happen to be the creators of Next.js. Vercel enables developers to host Jamstack websites and web services that deploy instantly, scale automatically, and requires no supervision, all with no configurations. To deploy to Vercel, we need to install the Vercel CLI in our system. And all we need to do is run one of these two commands, depending on the package manager that you're using. In this webinar, we use Yarn, but you're free to use npm too. Now, let's jump in and deploy our site. The first thing we need to do is clone our repository, but I already have it in my working directory. So the next thing we do after cloning in the repo is install the dependencies that we're going to need in order to run our application. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is set up our environment variables. We have a task called setup that will ease the process for you. It will ask a couple of questions. If we don't have a .n file, we need to create one. The .cms URL in this case is a .cms instance where your data is stored. The public URL is a deploy URL and we will create a generic for now and we will change it later when Freddy explains edit mode anywhere. Now you need to put here the username and password for that instance. Uh, put a token um, expiration. We'll select 10 days. And this will uh, create our end file for us with all the values that we need to deploy to Vercel. Okay, so let's deploy to Vercel. After installing the CLI with this command, we need to run Vercel login, um, but you need to create an account in Vercel.com and you can use GitHub or create a new account with your email and password um, as any other service. Once you're logged in, all you need to do is run Vercel. Vercel for dev and Vercel um, prod for production. Let's um, deploy to production. 
Okay, so here's a couple of questions that the CLI asks to us. Okay, so let's create a new one. Um, which scope, in my case, is Iberpad? Is an existing project? No. And let's create a new .cms jam stack. In which directory we select the default value. Russell detects that this is a Next.js project and sets the build command, the output directory, and the development command for us. So let's select no. And we just have to wait for a couple of minutes while this finishes. Now that this is finished, let's see our website. And there we go. Couldn't be easier. Now that we finish deploying to Vercel, Freddie will explain how .cms edit mode anywhere works. Let me explain to you how to edit a single page app on a Jamstack website works in .cms. First, a content creator or any user asks .cms to edit a page. .cms do a post request to an edit mode anywhere server. In this case, we use Node.js, but it could be anything you want. With that request, .cms sends the page object. It's the same object we get in the response of the page API. With that object, our Node.js server using Next render the page and give back a string of HTML. That HTML contains some extra data attributes that we append or that we add to the HTML using some special web components that we create for this specific use, use case and is available on NPM. Then the server sends back to .cms that HTML. .cms takes that HTML and with the data attributes adds all the tooling and all the buttons that the user needs to edit the page. Then loads the edit mode with HTML, then the user can just start editing the page. Now it's time to do some code. So we have our server file and it's just a typical Node.js server. We're using Express. And we are importing next. We are initializing next and dev mode. We need to initialize next next in dev mode because every time we ask a page for this server, we want we don't want next to cache anything or we don't want to statically build the pages. We want to build the page when the request comes in, right? Because we always going to pass the object. So we want the page built with that object. Then we're just saver, saving the um, request handler. And here we are initializing our server, right? We initialize our server with express. Then with the get request, we just let, let next to handle all the get requests. But for the post request, what we're doing is we're getting the page object that is coming in the body of the post request sent by .cms. With that page, we are using the same transform page function to append the containers and the contentlets to the layout because that's the way our components or React components expect that object. Then we're getting the um, navigation from the API. And in the app, we are telling Next to append this environmental variable. If we look into that environmental variable, is the URL where our server is running, right? So it's localhost 5000, which is where our server is running. And we're doing that because when we're editing the page, even though the page is loaded inside .cms, all the assets live in this server, right? Are handled by Next. So all the assets are going to get into this get uh, request. But we need to prefix this. We need to prefix this because our .cms instance is going to be running in one URL, and this edit mode anywhere server will be running in another URL. Then 
we use the render function from next. We that function receives the request and the response. And this URL right here, sorry, this uh, this string represents the page that we create specifically for this purpose, for edit mode anywhere. And here we're passing the page render and the nav as an object, and these are the props that this page is going to receive. So if we go to pages, we now have a emma.js page, right? So what we're doing here is we are exporting the function get server side props. And this is making this page to be a server side render page. So this page is going to be rendered every time we hit or we create this page. So in the context, we're getting from the query the nav and the page render, right? That we are passing from here. Right? Then we just return that as props that we can take in our .cms a static page component. We're getting the page render and the nav. And then we're using the exact same .cms page component that we use everywhere. And we're passing the page render and the nav. But we also passing something, some prop extra. A prop that we call is edit mode and we're passing it as true. We're using that because inside the tree of React components, where we are when we are rendering the containers and the content legs, we need to pass an extra wrapper to add the data attributes that .cms needs to do all the edit mode in the .cms instance. And inside our .cms page component, we're getting the is edit mode, and we are passing it to the uh, page context value, right? We're doing this because we want this boolean to be available at any level of our React component tree. The next file I want to show you is the container component file. In this container component file, what we're doing here is if we have is edit mode in true, we are wrapping the containers and the content legs with the web components we create. And that web component is where we add all the data attributes. We create this as web components because we want to make sure that all the TMS users and front-end developers are able to, to use the data attributes and append the data attributes easily, no matter which framework are they using. In this case, we're using React. And because at this point, React doesn't play very well with uh, web components, we need to use this package called Reactify Web Components. So what this is doing is we pass the HTML tag of our web components, which are .cms, EMA, container, and .cms, EMA, contentlet. And we just pass this function, we pass the selector, and we basically what this is doing is, is giving me back a React component, right? So in the container default component, of course, we're receiving the container object. The container object inside have all the content legs that this container holds. And we're getting the is edit mode from the page context. And we're using this container uh, wrapper React component, right? We're passing the is edit mode and we're passing the container object. And inside we have the content legs, right? So let's go see this one first. So here we receive the children, which in this case are the content legs, and we receive the container. So, and we receive is edit mode. So when edit mode, when is edit mode is true, we are going to render the .cms edit container wrapper, which is this right here. It means is a web component, and we're passing the container. By passing the container to the web component, the containers contain the identifier, how many contentless you can add to this container, uh, what type of content types you can add, and some other information. Uh, so this will use that container information to create the data attributes uh, in this HTML. And then the children is just the children that we're passing here. And the contentlets component we have right here, we again are using the um, page content to get the is edit mode. And it's basically the same idea. We are iterating over the contentlets 
and we're passing the content net wrapper and we're rendering the content net wrapper uh, to each content net wrapper we pass in the content net itself and we pass in the is edit mode and inside the content net wrapper again if is edit mode is true we are rendering the .cms content net wrapper which is the web component and we're passing the content net also so they can add all the data attributes okay now let me show you how this looks like rendered inside a .cms edit mode so let's go to a .cms instance and let's try to edit one of the pages so if we go to for example store slash index you can see that now we have our single page app rendered in our edit mode right so if I inspect this code let me just put this a little bit smaller if we go for example to the banner and we go a little bit up here we can see that we have the .cms Emma container which is a web component and inside we have a .cms Emma contentlet which is the banner itself and you can see that these two web components have some extra data attributes which we pass from our SPA in edit mode only when it's edit mode although you can have that in your production because it's not going to hurt anything and with this we'll be able to if we go to edit we'll be able to edit this and let's for example change this title to hello world now we have hello world in our banner and that's pretty much how edit mode anywhere works now let me show you how you can run your edit mode anywhere server your node server locally for you to develop and debug and etc so we got our server right this is stored in server slash server.js and in our package.json in the script section we got this AMA script with basically what it does is run our server with or server file with node right so if we go to the pro to the terminal in the folder project we can run Jarn EMA or you can run npm run EMA if you're using npm by doing this um, it's going to start the server it says that the server is ready in localhost 5000 let me clean this up so if I go to my browser and I run localhost 5000 slash store boom I got my page just render and if you can see here you can see that it's saying it's building the page using the slot this is next right this is next doing his, his rendering he's compiling now it says that we're requesting the page from that CMS this is a logs we put into our code and it's requesting the map so basically what it happened here was the get request from the browser enters here and we'll just let it next to handle that right and this is i slash store uh, url next is going to use the um, the slug right here and it's doing his rendering right like we showed you in the first part of this webinar but if we go to dot cms and we ask for the page we can see the log that says dot cms edit mode and dot cms nav right that's the two new logs those logs are coming from here so when we did the post because dot cms make the post request we log in the dot cms edit mode we are not logging the part that says getting the page from the slash store because we're not doing that here we're getting the page from the body in the in the post request but we are getting the nav from the dot cms api and then we just render the ama so basically by running this command you can have your edit mode anywhere server running locally in your machine so you can work on it also i want to mention that even though we have the edit mode anywhere server here in the scripts we also have all the default next js scripts right we have the dev build start everything and you can run that without interruption we can even have both uh servers running right Let, let's say for example i want to run let's open another tab and go to my my folder and let's do join dev this will just start the server of next.js in localhost 3000 so if we go to here and we open localhost 3000 slash store which is the 
the page we're rendering right now, this is your Next.js uh, running in dev mode, right? So everything as you expect. You can even go like John build will burn um, Next.js and John starts to start the, ne the Next.js server in production mode. So let's do this. And then you can see it's also running in 3000. So if you go here, it's just there. It's, it's faster because it's production. So we can just browse, go back to store. We can go to a category. And this is just your next, right? So we are basically able to not only run the edit mode anywhere in this project, we are also able to run all the next functionality. The last step is tell.cms where is our server? Where is it going to get the, the page to, to do the edit mode? Uh, to do this, we need to do, we need, right now we need to install a, a plugin, but uh, in the future release, we will have in this out of the box. So the plugin will be included in the .cms system out of the box. So to, to uh, install the plugin, we need to go to DevTools plugins, and then we go upload plugins. These are these two files that will be available after the webinar. This is one, we just load. And then we need to do the same with the other one. So it's this one right here. So all the plugins are ready, deployed. So then we have to go to System Sites. We need to find the site that we want to use with Edit Mode Anywhere because you can have a site as regular Edit Mode and you can have another site with Edit Mode Anywhere. So we edit this site. We go all the way down, and here, when it says proxy URL for edit mode, we just put the URL of our server, of our node server. In our case, if you remember, it was just localhost file token. Then we just save and activate, and that's it. Now.cms is ready to load the pages from, from our localhost 5000 edit mode anywhere server. As Freddy explained, we need a custom server to use .cms edit mode anywhere, and Vercel is serverless, so in order to run a server, we will deploy to Heroku. First, we need the same environment variables that we set up earlier. The next public .cms host, the deploy URL, and the bearer token. You will see later how we use this. So what is Heroku? Heroku is a platform as a service that enables developers to build, run, and operate applications entirely in the cloud. We need to install the Heroku CLI with this command. If you don't have it installed, then we will run Heroku create. This will give us the deploy URL environment variable. And finally, we deploy with git push Heroku master. Okay, so let's continue with Heroku. Similar to for sale, you need to install the CLI. And after installing it, you need to run Heroku, login, and but first you need to create an account. It's very similar to Vercel. So after this is done, you need to run the command Heroku create, and this will give us a deploy URL that we will put here in this value. This will create a new app. Let's select this URL and put it right here. Now Heroku will, will run these two scripts by default, but we don't want that. We want to, to run our custom server. That's why we need a process file, also called a proc file. We need to tell Heroku to run in the web environment to run this command for us. You will find more in the profile documentation. Okay, so let's see in our dashboard Pacific Shell and here it is. Now let's go to our settings, um, reveal config vars and set our environment variables in the in the Heroku dashboard as well. So let's put all our variables here. The deploy URL. And 
and the bearer token. Okay. Now, git push Heroku master will deploy our server to Heroku. This will take a little while, so let's wait for a bit. Okay, so we're finished. And let's see what we have here. Let's run Heroku logs tail to make, to make sure that we're running on dev mode. Okay, so this is good because we don't have anything in the root yet. Let's go to store and it seems is in dead mode. Remember Freddy mentioned that in order for edit mode anywhere to work, the next JS server had to be in dev mode. And now, this is a URL that you are going to use in edit mode anywhere. And that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching. We're going to open up for questions now. Thanks for joining this training. We hope it was helpful. Please reach out to me if you would like to discuss and schedule a tailored training for your team.